What's going on, friends? Welcome back to another 61 Indie Showcase developer conversation. Mike here along with Becca on the 61 Indie side of things. Hello, Becca. Hey. Today, we're here with Chris Rosenthal, the man, the myth, the legend Hi. behind the secret of Crystal Mountain. Chris, hello. Hi. How you doing? Doing wonderful. Chris, you you did something rare for 61. Um, we, uh, when did we start talking? Like November, I think, at this point? Yeah. It something was right like before that? Thanksgiving, yeah. Yeah. Um, friend of the show, a uh, mutual uh, indie comrade, if you want to yeah. call it that, Bill <laughs> Grote of, of the Indie Informer, uh, shot me an email about like, hey, I think you should check this game out. It might be a good fit for the next showcase. And I looked at the trailer for The Secret of Crystal Mountain. I was like, God damn, Jill, you are right. This is completely <laughs> my jam. I need to have this game. And like, as soon as she showed me that, I was like, yes, this is this has to be our opener. So for the first time in, in the showcase's history, you properly are the first person to properly debut like their game and their Steam page for for our uh, for our show. So first off, thank you so much for your your trusting. Oh yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, thank you for uh, ha hosting a show. I just thought it was a cool thing. Um, you know, I've been looking for something to debut uh, the game, and you know, I was looking around, and it's kind of, it's hard to get your your game into these things in the first place, and nobody knows who I am. You know, I've been here for for a while working <laughs> on like sure. little prototypes and stuff for many years, but I've never released a, a proper game before. Um, and so I was I was looking around, and and I kind of wanted to find something that was less well known and that wasn't that was more grassroots in the first place um i even thought about just like creating uh a, a showcase myself and trying to get a bunch of different indie developers together to to do it Hell yeah or going through an influencer or something like why not you know um but yeah i reached out to jill because i just have a lot of respect i knew her from game informer uh you know i was a game informer uh a subscriber for a long time and I just felt like if there's anybody in this space who's going to like give me the time of day and like and and like point me in the right direction, it's it's Jill. So it you know it worked out really well. Yeah, I, I really appreciate it. Like genuinely, like I, I think during those initial conversations, I mentioned like I've I'm such a huge fan of like uh, a little Gator game and a short hike. So like yeah, as soon as um that trailer wrapped, I was like yeah, th this is it. It's it's gonna be a banger. This is a hundred percent my kind of jam, and I'm sure everybody's gonna gonna love it as much as yeah I and do, it's so. it's it's great to hear from you that the game invokes that because that's you oh, know 100%. i'm a huge fan of those games too and that's uh, totally like what i'm going for so let's get into it a little bit like you you mentioned that you've you've been around for a while so uh, mm -hmm. please tell me about yourself and, and a bit about your game dev journey so far sure well, i mean i've always wanted to make games um you know since i was a kid um when I was a little when I was like eight, nine years old, I saw uh Sonic the Hedgehog for the first time. And every time I would go over to my best friend's house. A man of taste. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how people will react to that at this point. Um oh, but, I've been grooming our audience, don't worry. <laughs> good, good, good. Um uh and and every time I go over to my friend's my best friend's house, I'd want to play Sonic. And he was like he started to get tired of of uh, me wanting to play Sonic. So eventually he was like, let's just go outside and play. But but then we went outside and I just pretended I was Sonic outside. Um and no, Same. I just I've I've always wanted to develop games. My my uh dad started getting me into programming and everything when I was when I was really young, when I was like 11, 12 years old. And uh I went through a a different kind of journey than I expected for sure. Uh, and going into graphic design, I worked in marketing for, for a lot of years and I've been creating all these different prototypes. I started learning unity game engine and, and learning how to make games, uh, for many years. Um, uh, but it, uh, it was this thing where, you know, you're in a job and, and you, you have some safety and you don't want to like move out of that necessarily. Sure. And, uh, so I've created a lot of prototypes over over the course of like a decade and like little games and short little things, but I've never released like a full game before because I couldn't couldn't find the time. Like you know, I would work on like the weekends, work you know in a few hours in the evening, etc. Uh, but then what happened last year is I was laid off from from that job and it was a very stressful job. So it was a weird thing of like you know I was laid off, but it's this thing of there isn't as much stress anymore. There's a stress of like, I lost a job, but there's this weird feeling of like, I can do anything. It doesn't have to be one thing. And I just felt like if not now, when, you know, when yeah, do I do this? And so I, 
I had this prototype for, for a little while. It was one of the last ones that I did. And it just, uh, you know, it was inspired by a short hike. Um, but it's also, it's really inspired by Zelda mechanics in, in Mario uh, to, to a large degree, which is, I mean, if you go back to a short hike, like that, that is the core, the core inspiration of it is like, what if Zelda to some degree without combat, you know, in, in a wholesome yeah. format. Um, and I started building that prototype before and it just seemed like the perfect thing that like, Hey, I can take a year or two years and, and turn this into a full game and, and change my career. Yeah. So I'm curious, like you mentioned, there were a bunch of prototypes you were working on. Um, what was it about secret mountain that, or sorry, crystal mountain, secret okay. crystal mountain. Yeah. <laughs> what was it about crystal mountain that stood out to you the most versus some of the other ones? Man, uh, it's just, it's, it's a, it's a style of production that works for me right now because I can create a lot of content in there pretty quickly. You know, I think the core thing for me, and I think people will discover this as they play it, is it's about being able to hide little secrets and things in different places in the game. And it is, uh, you know, people assume that like a wholesome game like this, oh, it's easier to make or whatever, like a short hike. It's yeah. easier to make to some degree. That's that is kind of the, what, what the production that was about was like making a game in six months. But actually, it's like actually really hard to create a game that's engaging uh, without combat and all that. Mm-hmm. But it's also really hard to create combat mechanics and that kind of thing. Oh, for sure. And, and I've yeah. done some some of that stuff, and it's always been a challenge. This uh, it works really well for me right now in terms of from just a production standpoint, and it, it just kept. It just, I just kept having ideas, so many ideas, so many ideas that I can't even put them all in the game. And I have all these different things that I want to do. Um, and so it's something that kind of hit for me and just worked for me at a certain time. And, and also it's just a, from a marketing standpoint, from a business standpoint, it makes sense. You know, the, 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 I am taking like somewhat of a risk, um, by going off and doing this. Um, and I have sacrificed uh, pretty significantly just to get to this point. Um, and that is unfortunate, but, um, I'm in a position where, uh, I can do that. I'm fortunately in a position where no matter what happens, I land on my feet. And so, and I understand not everybody's in that position, you know, so it's something that's really fortunate and I, I'm very thankful for that. Um, and so I know like a lot of people would say, well, why, you know, why take that risk for a game like this for, for, for a wholesome game, like, like a short hike. But actually I think that it makes really good business sense because it's a game that I'm a fan of. It's a genre that I'm a fan of to begin with. And I know that there are lots of people out there who uh, also lo- love these kinds of games. And so there's a built in audience. And so it actually makes a lot of sense from that standpoint too. You know, it's just a gut thing. You got to go with what feels right, like the right thing. And I think that people should make the games that they want to make instead of what they think will make money. Yeah, I, I think you know, we'll we'll touch on this later because I do. We have a standard question that we end each interview with, but um, that's kind of what the indie spirit is, right? It's just taking those risks and and making a project that you are generally passionate passionate about. And as long as you're believing in yourself, as much as this sounds like a Hallmark card, it's gonna pay off. Like, you know, no, I truly believe that. And I I do believe that if you build something and you make it good and you put a lot of heart into it, people will show up for it. Yeah. Yeah. And I I also agree that, yeah, Short Hike and Little Gator Game and a bunch of, you know, Haven Park, there is that audience. So business wise, also a good choice. (laughs) For sure. Definitely. Uh, So um, when we're taking a look at the trailer, we get a little bit of glimpse of the universe and and kind of what you've been um, working on and building. But could you give us a little bit more detail about what to expect when people jump in? Yeah, so uh, I I could kind of cover the backstory of the of the world because I've kind of fleshed it out. Um, It so Crystal Mountain used to be the the biggest exporter of of magic crystals in the world, used by wizards and witches all over the world for for decades. Um, but recently the, the exports suddenly stopped and nobody knows why. And the, the island has been shrouded in mystery. Um, and there's been rumors that there was a, uh, some kind of a war on the island, something happening there. And, and you land there as uh, Maroon the Fox, who is this delivery person who has a letter that he needs to deliver to the top of the mountain, to Crystal Mountain. And he's, now he's stranded there because he's crash landed. 
And uh, as you go through, you'll discover the story of what happened here. That there was there was this war that happened, but that's in the past. They're they're past that now. It's all it's all over. And so it's the it's the, these little animal characters who are kind of recovering, and they're in this place where they are figuring out how to uh, how to live in, in the aftermath of that, and they're figuring out how to live in it in a sort of post-economic world where they, where they are just like building things for each other and helping each other out and that kind of thing. It's a very wholesome thing in that way, but it was really inspired by um, what I mentioned before of being laid off and, and how that felt. And this kind of actual like peace in that, because my job was very stressful. Um, and that's kind of the, that's kind of the inspiration for that, that feeling of, of, of the Island and, and the way the characters are, are kind of uh, trying to figure things out for themselves. And so as a result of, of Crystal Mountain being this place with all this magic and all the things that happened before, there's all this mysterious and, and wild stuff going on on the island. There are these, like, uh, there are pots that are just magically spawning everywhere and you've got to go around and destroy all of them, which of course is an homage to, to Zelda uh, games. <laughs> And there is this uh, there's this big stingray uh, that is flying around in the air, and and nobody really knows why it's there, and it keeps pacing around the mountain, and you've got to figure out well, what what is this stingray, and that's kind of the that's kind of the crux of the story is figuring out that that stingray's story and and why it's there, and uh, figuring out the secret of <laughs> the secret of Crystal Mountain. Trademark <laughs> <Great> pending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I, oh, sorry. Back. Go for it. Okay, um, so so in terms of um, gameplay with that, like what, what kinds of things are we looking at? Are we ex- expected to have puzzles or is it just going to be mostly adventuring around like in a Zelda game and things like that? What are we looking at? It's mainly a game about exploring and discovering secrets. And, and what I'm really trying to do is make it so that people can kind of find their way of playing the game. Uh, it's heavily inspired by... Uh, Legend of Zelda and, and Super Mario both. And it's kind of this interesting thing of like, and it's a love letter to Nintendo to some degree. It's kind of this interesting thing of what if you mash those up. I call it a platforming RPG mm-hmm. because it's mostly a platformer, but it has RPG mechanics. And so uh, one of the things in the demo is that you get the shovel item, which, which you know, a short hike also has, um, where you can uh, dig things up and there are little uh, X's on your map uh, where treasures might be found. And so uh, I, there are going to be a lot of different items like that that are kind of Zelda inspired items that allow you to do different things. Um, but one of the interesting uh, mechanics is this bird mechanic, which is something that I've always wanted to do where you have this little pet bird, Molly, who is uh, at any point you're able to uh, f- uh, deploy your bird and, and fly it around. This also, it turns out like if you try to think of any mechanics for things like Nintendo has done it to some degree, yeah, <laughs> but it's, this is also something that comes from from the Legend of Zelda. Of course, it's from uh, you know the Wind Waker. You had the little seagull and and uh, uh, Skyward Sword. You had the beetle. But I've always wanted to create a version of that that was more open, that was more of a constant thing where you could just do it anywhere, and then it allowed you to to do different things. And with the bird, you can see uh, areas in the in the game that you can't get to with maroon uh, ahead of time, which is an interesting thing. And you can interact with the environment in a different way than you can with maroon. So it o- opens up all these different possibilities of having this two character dynamic where, where you have, to, or you don't have to use both of them. You can actually choose to just like never use the bird because you, the game is just so open that you can do that. But if you want to, you can sort of have this dynamic where you kind of go back and forth between them and they allow you to do different things. I'm curious, like in terms of the gameplay, like obviously we're talking a lot about Zelda inspirations and Mario inspirations. Was the goal or I guess like the vision to always craft a game that is more just straight up a short hike where it is more just a straightforward adventure or were those Zelda and Mario inspirations always part of the plan and like this genre blend always part I think of the, the plan? I think the Zelda and Mario inspirations have kind of always been in me. Yeah. And, and just kind of happened. It started with a short hike and looking at that and looking at those games, little Gator game, you know, um, those kinds of games and, but working backwards to like, well, what is that really? And, you know, I realized that a short hike and little Gator game are actually quite a bit different because a short hike, the Island is pretty small and there's a significant amount of over verticality. And so you're constantly, there's constantly rises and falls and the train's very bumpy and it's very, it's this very specific thing. This little Gator game is the, uh, the land is lar- larger. It's a lot flatter, and there's a lot more quests, and you're doing a lot of quests. 
But both of them are tapping into essentially Zelda mechanics, RPG mechanics to some degree. And so I kind of went back to that and, and, and said, well, what is, you know, what is this really in it? It is, you know, Zelda inspired, it's RPG inspired. And, and so that's kind of where I ended up going uh, gradually, just like adding uh, various different sort of Zelda mechanics. There's also this thing of like how you can have a thing in a, in a game where there, there are things there, but you can't see them. And I, it's something that I really like. And the idea of like, there are secrets there, you can't see them, but you can discover them in certain ways. And that has become like a big part of, of it. And it's just something that I discovered over time. You know, a lot of cases you, you mess around with development, you try different things and you will just end up discovering ideas. And then eventually the, those ideas, if it's really good, you're just like, Oh, I want to do more and more of this. Yeah. It makes sense. I, something you touched on in that wonderful description um, that like kind of sparked something in terms of the narrative. You, you mentioned like how like a short hike has a lot of like literal rises and falls, but mm-hmm. that kind of reminds me of, um, you know, right before we started recording, we, we both like kind of touched on like being laid off and, and like the impact that took. And obviously that itself has a lot of, and our journeys together, like whether it is secret crystal mountain or six, one indie, a bunch of rises and falls in that process. So you mentioned the narrative is, was very, inspired by your your own personal journey um what did you find it challenging to kind of open up and have that vulnerability to craft this kind of narrative well the 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 short answer is like um i had to come up with an idea for what the story was to submit the game to to indicate was actually where (laughs) it started so it's like what is this actually and i realized that it was something i was doing subconsciously actually um, because I what was going through, I was going through a lot. And so I was like, it was affecting the way I was doing the game. And to some degree, it was like, I don't want to create something that, uh, is like, is like, because, because the war thing was something that I had in there already, but I didn't want to create something that was like inaccurate or dishonest to a certain degree. I mean, it can't be too dramatic, right? That's the thing is like, I want to make sure it's a wholesome game, et cetera. Yeah. But it's like, what, you know, what, were, what would these characters be like feeling? Uh, what would they, and it doesn't really, it doesn't really come out in dialogue or anything like that. It doesn't really sure. necessarily come in. It's mentioned a little bit, but it's more of this just kind of breezy kind of thing. And this kind of just like this piece in that you've gotten past something uh, really difficult. And because it wasn't understand, it wasn't being laid off necessarily. That was difficult. It was this course, really stressful yeah. job that I had before being laid off and trying to save the company and failing to be able to do that. Um, and being past that and just being like, okay, I'm going to move on and uh, do, you know, something that I've always wanted to do and maybe live my dreams now. And so what, you know, what, what, what does that feel like? And it was just kind of this there was a calm to it because suddenly you're not working anymore. You know, and I have, you know, I have a certain amount of money that I'd saved up for retirement. You know, fortunately that was very fortunate to have. I started burning through. And the real thing is that I couldn't uh, find a job in, in graphic design. Like I probably would have actually taken the security over, over this. Um, but there's just nobody hiring around here. And then I went to apply for remote jobs and, you know, it's a story that you're seeing all over the place. Like for a lot of people, unfortunately, yep. you know, I went to try to apply for remote jobs and as soon as you're applying for a job, like a thousand people are, and you, you have to be like one of the best in the country. And so it's, it's been a difficult thing. I did finally get a, a part-time job that's helping. Um, giving me some security. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's, I think less so about opening up on that. And it's more, it's more of just like trying to capture the feeling of, of that, of that period of time where I was trying to figure things out. And capturing it in the colors and then the the like particle effects and things like that, things that you might not even actually think about. It's less in the dialogue and more in the in the way the, the world looks. Yeah, even just like looking at the trailer, you really the visuals and the presentation, and even I would say even like the pacing of the trailer and and just like how the world is being set <laughs> up, you do feel that like it, it is quite striking that you could. could you can't portray that kind of emotion. Or, that's or that's really good to hear. Kind of, yeah, I, have, it, I have no idea, you know, it's like, no, it works. <laughs> like you could tell that like there is just through like the color palette and like you were saying, like some of the particle effects and even some of the design uh, aesthetic, you really get that kind of invoked emotion out of it. No, it's so great you, to hear. You, you nailed the assignment. <laughs> 
Definitely. <laughs> well, Chris, we've been um we've been ending each one of these conversations uh very similarly. If there's a question that has come up and um there's no wrong answer, so feel free to take it as you will. Sure. Um, but I do have to ask you now, what does indie mean to you? Oh boy. Um <laughs> I know there's been a lot of discussion around this. I feel like, and the thing is that's frustrating is I feel like there's the risk that we lose something in, in, in certain people not getting a voice. Um, and, and I suppose that there, there are people who are, who, who get mad and, and, you know, I understand kind of the reason why, um, I don't want to get mad about it either, um, necessarily, but I do think that it's important that we that we do define it. Um, and I guess I'm dodging the question now, but I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll answer it. Um, I, think I should say also. I mean, like you can make not, it a definition. You can make it a feeling. Like whatever, sure, it's it's not like it's not like okay, it's specific number of people or a specific number of dollars. Like where do you draw that line? It's like it's impossible, right? It is. It's people who are independent in some way or another, right? It's people who need the help, right? And 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 a team of twenty people can need help. You know, a team of 20 people or, or maybe even 50 people. Again, where do you draw that line? Who knows? But they, they can need help at some point um, and be uh, independent and be a small studio that needs a publisher, that needs something, that needs to be lifted up, especially if they're self-publishing. Um, and so I, I think that that's something that we have to, like, really think about and, and not lose the the idea of of uh, of who uh, needs who needs the most help you know who needs to be sort of highlighted spotlighted etc that's where it comes from it's not about oh we're going to set these like numbers and etc it's about who needs that that pr- promotion at, at a specific time and that's it's as much of a gut thing as as it could possibly be defined by numbers or anything like that yeah that was a good answer <laughs> Chris, thank you so much for not only taking time to hang out with us for a little bit this afternoon, but again, seriously, thank you so much for trusting us with Crystal Mountain. It's, I, we said it in the showcase also, but it's been a hard secret to keep because like, sure, generally just such a fan already. So it's been hard to just not share it with friends. Like, oh my God, look at this sure. beautiful game coming out. Um, well, now you can share it and please do. Now I can. Yeah, yeah please share it. Yeah, share it. <laughs> wishlist it. Play the demo today. Yeah, I mean, the, the game needs support, like, you know, wishlisting, donating, um, newsletter signups, which will be on the website. All that stuff helps a lot. Um, oh, yeah. So I appreciate any any kind of support. Yeah, um, so where uh, where could people follow and, and all that stuff? Plug away. Yeah. So, I mean, thanks so much for unveiling the game uh, and and thanks for having me here today. Um, I hope everybody will check out uh, Secret of Crystal Mountain and the demo on Steam or uh, crystalmountaingame.com. Um, hashtag, or not hashtag, um, at crystalmtm. I'm sorry, mtn game, like mit- mountain. <laughs> at crystal mitten game um, <laughs> on, on social media. Perfect. And yeah, all of those links are on six indie.com slash showcase. If you click on the beautiful crystal mountain key art, it'll bring you to the crystal mountain page where you could click all that and you could, yes, wish list, please wish list it, play the demo, all that good stuff, support this game. Cause it, it already seems like it's going to be something quite special. Mm-hmm. So yeah, please all the people that could back it, do it. Do it for the Sonic fans, you know? (laughs) Chris, thank you so much once again. I appreciate it immensely. It's been a pleasure working with you these past few months. And uh, yeah, finally actually getting to do this. (laughs) It's a long time coming. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, y'all. There's a whole bunch of other interviews that you probably didn't check out yet. So go to sixwillindie.com slash showcase. Meet some of these wonderful folks behind the games that uh, we got to show off today. And um, yeah, play more indies.